Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here is here once again, and now I'm going to do part three of my vinyl collection as of uh, 2016, which, um, you know, uh, we're pretty much here, and the D's here, and I left off with that Dr. Dog, Wild Race EP, um, uh, which, uh, you know, I think, which uh, I believe I, I, I like showed uh, both yeah, which uh, I believe I showed both sides of that record. Yeah, yeah, I pretty much did that. Um, so we got two more Dr. Dog albums in here. I have quite a bit of Dr. Dog albums. Of course, I got to stock up. I'm one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, this is my, this is B Room. Um, got this uh, signed by the band at um, a show at uh, Rams Head Live in uh, Baltimore. Uh, it was, was a great show, um, and this is a really good album. Definitely one of my favorites of 2013. Really, out of all the records in 2013, this is one that probably grew on me the most. It took me many listens to get into this album, but now it's like one of my faves of all time. Anyway, um... And uh, it's like a big poster in here. I think it's pretty cool. And then there's all the lyrics on there. Um, and yeah, definitely some of Dr. Dog's most ambitious work to date uh, shows up here on this album. Um, and then, of course, uh, this is what the vinyl looks like. And, of course, um, uh, it does come with the uh, CD version of the album, which I actually pre-ordered the CD uh, when it came out. And, uh, also, um, I, like, um, no, there's no download card in there. And also, I, like, got sent a copy of this album of, like, uh, one of the executives at uh, the band's label, Anti Records. Uh, as well as, uh, like, a Dr. Dog sweater. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm. So, yeah. Definitely check out B Room if you have it. Really, really solid album. Um... And, uh, also, uh, in 2015, Dr. Dog released their first live album, which I do have a copy of it here on vinyl, which I did, you know, like, sort of order this online. This is Live at a Flamingo Hotel. This is, like, sort of a collection of all kinds of different live performances from the band, um, recorded during the B-Room tour. And, uh, there's, like, uh, photos of the band and then their crew over here. And, uh, yeah. And I did see them doing, during, I did see the band during this tour that they did at the 930 Club in D.C. And it was a fantastic show. The, the band always puts out, be sure to catch these guys on tour. They always put on a great live show. And, uh, that's one vinyl, and, uh, this album was, like, only available on vinyl and MP3, which, you know, we did sort of get it on my iTunes as well. And, and then there's the other vinyl. What I think it's cool is, you know, uh, they, they, they finally have, um, a live version of Say Ah on here, which I think is pretty cool. And then also, it's the first time on, like, a record that we're getting their amazing cover of Heart It Races by Architecture in Helsinki, which uh, I'm not really a huge fan of the original, but Dr. Dog's version is awesome. Mm. And this, and this next one, I recently added this one to my collection about a month ago. One of my favorite records from 2015. Um, I'm sure you know what this one is. I Love You, Honey Bear by Father John Misty. Dang. 
This album is fantastic. I just love his sarcastic, snarky lyricism on this album, as well as, like, as, like, many reviewers, like, The Needle Drop have mentioned about it, and just, and beautiful instrumentation, really nice vocal harmonies on this thing, and some of the best artwork you're bound to find on an indie folk album right now. I decided to get this one on vinyl, not just because I love the album so much, but because the artwork, look at that. That, 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 that just looks so much better in a big vinyl case than it does just in a CD case. Yeah, now I can see why so many people have this album on vinyl right at this point. Yeah, I did play this album, plays really well. And uh, there's one of the vinyls. Yep. And there's also like, there's like a giant poster in this thing, which, uh, you know, you definitely gotta omit the poster too. Wow. And, and then you have lyrics in there. Um, yeah. And let me show you the other vinyl. Now, I did say in my review of this album that it was, like, my favorite album of 2015, in my opinion. But as time went on, I think my opinions upgraded a little bit. And my favorite album of 2015 actually would have to be the new Dawes album. Uh, all your favorite bands. Check that album out if you can. Dawes are such a great band. But yeah. I know lots of people have said this. But this is easily one of the best albums of 2015. You know, I'd be lying if I said I disagreed with the people that love it so much. And then I have both Fleet Foxes albums on vinyl. God, I have some Fleet Foxes on vinyl. I think they're, because I absolutely adore these two albums that I have that are pretty much the only two in their very short discography. But. This is their self-titled debut album, uh, great album, um, of course this one, easily one of the most critically acclaimed releases in, of 2008. Um, yeah, um, really nice artwork on this. I knew I had to probably get this on vinyl because look at that artwork. Isn't it gorgeous? And does come with this big sort of uh, paper that has like the credits and thank yous and stuff like that. And on the other side, bam, bam, just plain yellow. Yep, and uh, of course uh, there's the vinyl. I've only played like about half this, but um, it plays really well. And Fleet Foxes, just, you know, on vinyl, they sound amazing. Like, they're gargantuan vocal harmonies, and they're very organic, sort of ethereal instrumentation. Sound really just, you know, put it on vinyl, it's like a new level of, have he uh, of it like takes the term heavenly to a whole new level, pretty much. And it also comes with the Sun, with the sun Giant EP, which I haven't listened to yet. But I'll have to check it out sometime. Yeah, and I don't think there's a download card in there. Yeah, I think it's just the vinyls. Still, um, great album. So, so like, uh, the... And by the way, the Father John Misty vinyl, I did get at Barnes & Noble. And also got this self-titled Fleet Foxes album on vinyl, too. So it's kind of a coincidence I'm showing Father John Misty before Fleet Foxes because Jay Tillman, you know, used to be the drummer for this band. And he does show up on this other Fleet Foxes album, which I'll show here. Helplessness Blues. 
bought this at a store in Catonsville, Maryland called Tracks on Wax. My god. Like, do, like, my god do I love this album. It's probably my favorite album of 2011. Yeah, just the instrumentation, the lyrics, the harmonies. God. What can I say except just give this album a try before too long. And of course, I love how in the inside I showed here it has like handwritten lyrics in it. I think it's pretty cool. You know, when you, when you get vinyl, it's always great. It's always awesome to get the lyrics. Yep, um, and, um, there's like two vinyls in here, um, here's the first one, and let me show you, uh, another reason I'm pretty glad I own this is because of the poster, which I'll show you in a minute, <laughs> but, yes, it, um, it does come with a download card from Sub Pop. Um, and hopefully I have enough room to show this giant fold up monstrosity over here. Yeah, a little sticky there. Uh, but then that's what it looks like. But I cover it in my face there. And then there's all the thank yous and of course, the liner notes. Whew. Mm. Yep. I do know Anthony Fantano loves this album, so, you know, um, yeah. So, yeah, like, shout out to you, Anthony Fantano. Keep the reviews going. Mm. Yep, um, and then there's the other vinyl, and yeah, believe me, Father John Misty wouldn't be who, Jay Tillman wouldn't be who he is today as Father John Misty if it weren't for this band that he first was, was a pretty pivotal role in. And reviewed this album back in December for like a throwback album review. Yellow House by Grizzly Bear. Another really good album. You know, kind of similar to Fleet Foxes, although this was act this came before Fleet Foxes. You know, uh, really just gorgeous vocal harmonies and also like, um, you know, some very avant-garde sort of sort of, you know, thrift shop instrumentation on this record. You're going to hear things like clarinet and flute and banjo and keyboards and uh, glockenspiel and stuff like that on this album. There's the lyrics on there. It's very minimal lyrics on a lot of these songs, but boy, do they leave a giant impression on me. And then, of course, there's the liner notes. Um, on this record, they work with Chris Cody, who's worked with people like um, Beach House and The Antlers and people like that, you know, quite a few indie bands out there that I really like. Um, then eventually, um, here's what the vinyl looks like. I'm showing a lot of vinyls in this video that have two in there. You know, wonder how they do that. And then there's, um, um, the, uh, side there, um, and then there's side C, oh, mm -mm, that's not side C, um, uh, this is side C, sorry about that, and then side D. And it kind of makes sense that this record is called Yellow House because it's actually recorded in an actual house, which gives it the real kind of intimate lo-fi recording quality, pretty much. Um, but yeah, it's a really good album. Check it out. Seriously.
Definitely one of my favorite, like, indie folk albums. Well, this is one that was sent to me by, like, I think it was Sugar Hill Records, something like that. Um, this is uh, one to Jackson, Unfinished Business. Haven't really listened to this in a few years, but I think it's cool that I have it because, um, uh, you know, Sugar Hill did send me this, and, you know, they, they and Label started sending me stuff, and, you know, I think it's cool, and all. Yeah, produced by Justin Towns Earl, one of my favorite Americana and folk singer-songwriters. Um, and that's what the vinyl looks like, you know. Um, I didn't really have a record player in my room when I got this, so it took a little while, but now I finally have one. Looks like there is a download card in this. Okay, get it. Uh, yeah, there is a download card in this. And and also have I have one out I have this is sort of a soul album that I have that I I've reviewed this one before Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings I learned the hard way um, you know I do like this album probably not as much as uh, uh, naturally is probably my favorite album in her discography but I learned the hard way is a pretty good album too. Uh, you know, I did give it a really positive review, so, um, uh, and while my tastes have changed, you know, I still think Sharon Jones is a phenomenal singer, and the Dap Kings are definitely some of the best soul musicians working today, really keeping soul alive. Of course, this is on Dap Tone Records, the label founded by the Dap Kings. Um, got this at the Music Underground, which is like a record store in St. College. I recently visited there and picked up a couple of records. I'll show them, like, uh, they're in the other bin of vinyls that I have, but you will show them when I get to that. And this vinyl does play really well, too. And looks like there's no download card in this. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, the the vinyl of Yellow House by Grizzly Bear, I got that like um, at a record store uh, slash bookstore in Pittsburgh. Don't really remember the name of that, but um, you know, uh, I am planning on. But my parents and I are like going to Pittsburgh soon, and we're like planning on going to that store maybe because we're like staying at a hotel that's like kind of close to there pretty much um but yeah uh, you know uh you know I do recommend you, but but yeah I do recommend you check this out you know it's definitely worth your time and the one and of course I mentioned the one Jackson thing and these two these next two vinyls that I got I got at a concert uh you know I it was like the first time I got two vinyls pretty much at the same time um which I thought was pretty cool um, and they're, and, uh, they're both, and they're both albums from Jukebox the Ghost, uh, which I, Box the Ghost, uh, when I saw them for the second time, I saw them in Auto Bar in Baltimore, uh, it was back in November 2014, around the time their latest album was released, which I still think that album's pretty good, but, you know, I'm here to show their first two records which I picked up on vinyl. Um, their debut album, Let Live and Let Ghosts. Um, uh, definitely a real, uh, definitely, definitely a great album. Um, you know, I was pretty lucky to get this, because this was like the last copy, because when I went to the merch, you know, it was like the last copy that, like, uh, of, of it on vinyl that, like, the merch guy had. Um, like, uh, you know, back, so, yeah, I was pretty lucky to get this, uh, around that time. Um, there's a lyric, and here we got a lyric sheet here. Um, and then there's like credits on the back and stuff like that. And there is a download card in here. Show it to you. Yeah, yeah. And like this album was released on CD in 2008, but wasn't released on vinyl 
until like 2010. There's side uh, one, and then there's side two. Alright, um, so yeah, um, so it's a Let Living, Let Ghosts is a, is a pretty solid debut from, uh, uh, Jukebox the Ghost, uh, just, uh, pretty much, and then I also got Everything Under the Sun on vinyl, uh, I do think this is a great album too, um, pretty much, this is the album that first sort of got me into the band, pretty much, and they're first to be released on Yep Rock. Shout out to you kind folks at over there in North Carolina at Yep Rock. Um, and uh, I think this is like one of the first like Yep Rock albums to like feature the label's new logo at the back, pretty much. Um, so um, then there's uh, the lyrics there. And then the thank yous, and like the, the sort of the complete liner notes are listed on the back of the album. Okay, uh, and this is what the vinyl looks like. You know, the band certainly kind of expanded their sound a little bit on this record, you know, going for some more power pop, some more like Weezer esque power pop, and you know, uh, and like incorporating more synthesizers and stuff like that. And yeah, really sort of, you know, make, making for a fuller sound, you know, on here. And and they did work with Peter Cadis on this album, who's worked with many artists like Interpol and The National and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so, so, so that sort of meant, you know, some, a different sound pretty much. And yeah, yeah, that's my vinyl copy of Everything Under the Sun. Great album. I do have a couple of Stephen Kellogg vinyls. Uh, you know, one of his is solo, and the other is one of his records of the Sixters. Since I've been a pretty longtime supporter of his, uh, I bought these both at a show that he played at Wolf Trap in uh, Vienna, like the barns at Wolf Trap. Um, but anyway, uh, I have Blunderstone Rookery, which I reviewed, uh, a few years back. Um, had this on CD, and now I have it on vinyl as well. Um, you know. And, uh, you know. And then there's, uh, uh the, the vinyls here. Yeah, yeah, and there's no download card in there, unfortunately. But, you know, I don't need those because uh, I do have CDs as well as, like, uh, an iTunes and an iPod. And the second album here that I got from him is with the Sixers. This is The Bear. Um, you know, I uh, haven't really listened to this record in a while, but I do know that I, you know, really liked this one. Um... And I noticed the vinyl track listing on this one's a little different because it doesn't have Lonely in Columbus or the song Do on it. But it does have a track called, a vinyl only track on it called Mayday. And released on Vanguard Records. And here, here's a download card for, for the album. And we're pretty much running out of time here, but I'll see you guys for part four of my vinyl collection, and I'll complete this box and eventually go on to the, you know, other vinyl box in that video. Okay, so yeah, that'll wrap it up there.